glass when two columns of water projected by a mysterious object shot with a hissing noise 150 feet into the air. July 23rd, three days later, the Columbus faced a similar tragedy by this extraordinary creature which could move with surprising velocity. Within three days, it traveled a distance of more than 700 nautical leagues. August 7th, the mysterious object strikes again, this time in the Pacific Ocean. Its victim was known as the Shannon. Then burst forth the endless controversy between the naive and the skeptical. The question of the monster inflamed all minds. To Professor Aronnax of the Natural History Museum. Madam, after much deliberation and in light of the refusal of many others, the United States government has decided to allow you to join this expedition. Please understand that this mission poses a risk to your life. Captain Fergus will have a cabin at your disposal. Cordially yours, J.B. Hobson, Secretary of Marine.
Myself. And you're waiting, Professor Sawyers. The shock threw you as well as me into the sea. No. But being my mistress's service, I followed. You should have remained on the ship. And leave you to the sea. Never. Ernest would rather drown. Instead, I come across a mysterious 
my journeys. Might I ask to flip for its contents? The knowledge in this journal is mine and mine alone. I have traveled all across the globe, and this journal documents all of it. If you wish to know about my travels, I do. Very well. Scientific 
say should Captain Nemo offer you your liver, would you accept it? I do not know. I mean, Ned, how can you? I do believe that Ned has a point. If we were to leave, the occasion must be serious, and our first attempt at leading must succeed. If it fails, we shall never find another end. Captain Nemo will never forgive us. I mean, what does your most favorable opportunity even look like? I've done some exploring. On the top deck, there is a hidden robot. On a dark night of the Nautilus, some short distance from some European coast, we will steal it and escape. Men are 
do you think? Well, I cannot tell, my friend. I would say that it's working does not require a large crew. Certainly, under these existing conditions, ten men at most ought to be enough. But why ought there be any more? Well, if my surmises are correct, the Nautilus is not only a vessel, but it is a place of refuge for those who, like its commander, have broken every tie on Earth. It is a dark night, and we are not far from the Spanish coast. If ever a time for the tempted escape, it is now. This will sadly profess it. Is there really nothing you enjoy on this Nautilus? No! We must seize this opportunity. The Nautilus will not be surfaced for much longer. The sperm whales in these waters are all bloody from the squid attacks. I will not remain on this vessel. Oh, Professor. Ned has decided to leave tonight. But, I mean, how I have had my fair share of adventure, and I wish to leave the Nautilus. I do not wish to die aboard this vessel. We have agreed to wait for an opportunity, and it has arrived. We can reach the Spanish coast. The sea is back. We must risk that. Liberty is worth paying for. Ned, if you feel so strongly, then I shall join you. All right. One by one, we'll make our way to the top deck. Then we'll steal the boat and escape. Who did I? 